Today in the news, we got some thread ripping details, some 9900KS, and a new shield. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. With the announcement of the delay for the 3950X, the company has teased us with the reveal of the next gen Threadripper. Now, leaks have been pouring in on the new motherboard chipsets, incompatibility with older platforms, core counts, etc. And today is no different. Videocards.com got a hold of some exclusive information about the lineup and its release dates. First is the naming scheme. We have three SKUs, the 3960X, 3970X, and 3990X. 90X, presumably in order from least to most cores. So far, all we know is that the 3960X should feature 24 cores. This was found by Tom Apisak, who tweeted an Ashes of the Singularity benchmark showing this information. This means the 3970X is likely a 32 core SKU, and the 3990X is probably going to be either 48 or 64. Since there is no sign of a 3980X to bridge the gap, I would guess that the 3990 X will likely be 48. Then we have the announcement dates. The full lineup should be announced on November 5th. That event won't only be for the CPUs and should include at least one of the three motherboard chipset variants that have been rumored so far, the TRX40. The November 5th announcement will also include the full specification for the TRX40 chipsets, the 3960X CPU, and the 3970X. For the 3990X, we'll have to wait until January of 2020 to get more information. They'll probably probably just tease it on November 5th. Both the 3960X and 3970X will have their review embargo lifted on November 19th, and it will also release on the same day for sale. As for the delayed 3950X, we still don't have an actual release date, but I assume that it will be made available simultaneously. Moving on to some Intel news, Tom's Hardware has put their hands on the unreleased Core i9-9900KS. And I gotta say, Intel has really refined their 14 nanometer process. I mean, it goes without saying. There's so many pluses after that, um, that um, yep, no jokes come to mind. In there, let's just call it a preview review, they tested the mitigations Intel put in the silicon for some of the vulnerabilities such as MSBDS, fallout, and meltdown. They did so by locking both a regular 9900K and the KS at the same frequency and running through some benchmarks. The hardware mitigations does reduce the IPC in some tests, but not in a huge way. In any case, the clock speeds will probably compensate. What's more interesting was comparing power consumption on this chip. We already know that a standard 9900K can reach 5 GHz on all cores, but the KS does so at incredibly lower power. When pushed to 5 GHz, the 9900K can pull as much as 200 watts. The new KS does so at 150 watts, and when overclocked to 5.2 GHz on all cores, the new KS SKU consumes 180. Now, I know that it's still a hell of a lot of power, but heat management is sure to be easier on the new chip if you're looking for higher clock speeds. So will this chip be worth it? Well, it depends on you. If you're looking for some fun overclocking or you only want the best of the best for gaming and you don't care about spending hundreds more to go from 140 to 160 FPS, then sure, this chip is for you. But if you're looking for a CPU that will do about 90% of the job for almost half the price, get something like a 3700X. You can always tweak the settings. Moving on to some smartphone news, it looks like the Razer reboot is finally coming. Back in January, Motorola filed a patent of a Razer-styled phone with a single foldable screen design. It looked very similar to the original flagship, except that it was wider to accommodate a proper aspect ratio for the phone when it's opened up. If not, it would have looked like this. Fast forward to now, and the company sent out an invitation for an event on the 13th of November in LA. I gotta say, I really liked the idea back when the patent came out, but I'm not so sure now. If it really follows the design shown here, then that means they'll have quite a hefty bump at the bottom. Personally, I would rather it just folds flat like current folding phones. But the form factor looks great. In fact, so great that according to Korea's ET News, the next Samsung Galaxy Fold will also fold in a similar way to focus on portability rather than screen size. The next gen Fold would also feature ultra-thin glass instead of plastic. 
Moving on to some Nvidia news, the Shield TV is finally getting a successor. It's been almost three years since Nvidia refreshed their 2015 Shield TV, and now they're coming out with two different models. The base model is a Shield TV with a complete redesign. It's a it's a tube now, yay. So this device is kind of like a Chromecast. You plug it behind your TV and it basically lives there. The Pro model looks just like the old Shield TV and both models have the same triangular remote. In terms of power, both of them share the new Tegra X1 Plus chip, which promises to be 25% faster than the old X1. This is probably the same chip design as the X1, but with maybe a die shrink and a slight overclock. The only difference between the base and the Pro model is apparently built in storage storage at 8 gigabytes for the base model and 16 gigabytes for the pro. All right, so once again, I'm gathering questions for Monday's Q&A video. So if you have any questions about me, tech or anything really, drop them down below with the hashtag Q&A. Those are the letters, not uh, the ampersand thing. And I'll answer it on Monday. Anyways, that is pretty much it for today's news. Hopefully you've enjoyed. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, he just walked out. He didn't even tap the table and walked.